Hello, and welcome to today's webinar with Fewari. Today we're joined by BYD and SMA America. We've got Devin Wilson from the BYD team. He's the commercial director uh, for BYD's Battery Box Enterprise here in America. And um, we we're also joined by Mike Mahone, who's a senior technical trainer at SMA Solar Academy. They're here to tell us the latest with the BYD Battery Box HVL and uh, Sunny Boy Storage. Um, before we get started, I'd like to invite everyone to use a Q&A feature to go ahead and ask any questions you may have as we're going through the information. And we'll be looking at those questions periodically throughout the presentation. I'd like to start with Devin. So Devin, if you don't mind taking it away. Definitely. Let me share my screen here. So first, I'd like to thank Bewa for, uh, for having us on here. Um, yeah, so my name is Devin Wilson, and I represent BYD's Battery Box Group here in the U.S. and North America. What I'm going to talk about is our battery solution here that's called the, the Battery Box HVL, the BYD Battery Box HVL. So a, a bit beginning with, with who BYD is. So BYD is a brand that is, that is not super well known in the U.S., but we are a large brand globally, and I want to kind of highlight some of the things we have going on just to fill some context. So first off, BYD has been around since 1995, very big company, and uh, notably Warren Buffett is, a, uh, is an investor in the company. From a, from a practical standpoint of, of the solar industry, two of the keys about BYD are that we're the, one of the largest cell manufacturers in the world, and we're one of the largest EV manufacturers in the world. We're also the, the number two or number one residential battery in Europe, depending on how you count. We have a lot of experience, a lot of experience globally. Um, we're up to 250,000 installations now. This graphic's a little out of date. We've been around for, for about seven years, mostly in Europe and the rest of the world, and we're, we have systems in 90 different countries. One of the, the keys to BYD and our success is that, is that we have complete vertical control over the whole manufacturing process, all the way down to the mining. Whereas a lot of our competitors that are purchasing cells or trying to purchase cells, um, we, we control that whole process, including the cell production and design and development of the product itself. And then lastly, one of our core competencies is, is cell production, production. And we have a huge amount of cell production. Here's a, a graphic showing some of those s s facilities all over China. So now I'm gonna jump into our battery box HVL product itself. So I'll, I'll first start by kind of covering some of the basics of the product, and then we'll talk about why it's a great solution. So the, the high level details are is that it's a high voltage indoor outdoor residential LFP battery that comes in multiple sizes. So there's, a, there's a lot there, so we'll kind of unpack that a little bit. But the first thing you can see is that you can construct different sizes with this battery from 12 all the way up to 32 kilowatt hours. The installation conditions, it can be installed indoors or outdoors, and it can operate between 14 degrees Fahrenheit up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's modular. This is, this is kind of the core feature of, of all of our battery box products is this modularity. So it, it's composed of two parts, um, one part being the, the modules themselves that contain the cells, and the other part that, that has two subcomponents, which is the top and the bottom of the battery. So with those two parts, you can assemble a bunch of different sizes. Here's some looks at the product. Uh, this first image right here is a look at the connection area. This is the area where you're connecting to the inverter. So it's got a really, really simple interface for connecting the DC and communication lines. Here's a snapshot of, of one of the modules, the, the plug mechanism on top of the module. And what we have here is, uh, is this internal plug and play mechanism. So there's no wiring of modules together. You just stack it up and it creates all those connections internally. And then here's the last shot of the, the power button and it's a LED indicator that kind of gives the customer or installer information about what the battery is doing. So now I'm gonna go into why this is a great solution. Um, and, the, and the first reason is, is that flexibility is, is core and, and key to this product. So one of the things we like about our, our, our battery and the fact that you can choose these different sizes is you can pick the right solution for the customer's needs right now. So a lot's changing in the home energy system in everyone's home. You know, EVs are coming. There's a lot more electrification of, of homes in the form of heat and appliances being, being pushed towards electrical versions versus gas versions. And so it's a customer may kind of know what they want right now, but not know where things are going. And so one of the things you can do is you can start with tailoring that solution to the customer's needs right now, specifically aligning it with the customer's budget. So you can feel confident that you can offer them the exact size you think works for them, and then you can scale it as they go. 
And so um, you can have that confidence in choosing the right size, knowing that if they needed more energy later on, more capacity, you can always add modules. And you see this graphic here, you can always add on additional modules to your stack until you get up to 32 kilowatt hours. So this is a huge feature and offers that peace of mind, kind of future proofing for the customer, knowing that if something changes or if they just decide they need more capacity, if outages are longer or similar, they can do that. So then flexibility also extends to the installer. Um, one of the things we've, we've observed globally is that our battery is really, really liked because of how easy it is to install. Specifically, it's easy, to, easy because it breaks into pieces and you can carry it to the location that's gonna be installed very simply. Um, contrast this with other products that while their overall weight is lower, um, the individual components are much heavier. So this is a simple process. You carry it to the location the, cu the customer wants it installed, stack it up and all that internal wiring is done when you stack it up and then it's just wiring it to the inverter. Additionally, flexibility on install location. So this matters for two reasons. One is just customers' preferences. Um, some of them have a garage they want to put in, some of them don't and they want to put it outside. But also regulation. What we see is there's is kind of changing regulation about where you can install a product. So the flexibility to maybe uh, if you're planning on putting it inside and you find out that your local AHJ wants its battery outside, you, you have the ability to do that. Then kind of diving into what's inside this product. Um, we're going to get into chemistry here really briefly, but um, the term lithium ion is used uh, quite broadly and it refers to many different types of, of chemistries. Uh, the two key chemistries in the residential storage space are LFP and NMC. And so different competitors use different versions of, of these chemistries. BYD as a company produces both chemistry types, but we focus on LFP for stationary storage. And the reason for that is because LFP outshines NMC in pretty much every category except for size and weight. And as mentioned, one of the, one of the things we can focus on to mitigate that weakness of size and weight is a modular product that breaks into pieces so it's, it, it is easier to install. But when it comes to the other uh, uh, metrics, LFP is safer, can produce higher power, is known to have longer life, meaning it degrades slower, better thermal performance. You can use it in higher temperatures, which is important for a lot of the areas that storage is hot right now. And then it's more environmentally friendly. We say that because the constituent parts that are in that battery. Uh, LFP was designed to use common elements, phosphate, iron, versus NMC, which uses nickel, manganese, and cobalt, which, uh, which are toxic chemicals. Drilling down on a couple of those metrics really quickly, safety. Why do we say it's safer? It's because LFP cells are resistant to thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is when uh, external heat and the, and the energy inside the battery kind of spiral out of control, control and you get off gassing and, and flames and whatnot. LFP cells are resistant to this. This is why we think it's the best choice for a product you're gonna put in or around your home. Additionally, power. Uh, a huge use case for batteries here in the United States is, is emergency backup. And when you're in, in backup mode, you're running your whole home off your battery and inverter. And so a lot of customers look at the different inverter options and they choose an inverter based on, on the power rating and they choose a battery based on how much capacity it has. So they kind of feel natural because those are their kind of intrinsic, intrinsic, intrinsic uh, capabilities there. The important thing to note though, that, that the whole system matters, right? So if you have a battery that can't deliver the power that your inverter needs, you're not gonna get that power in your home in a backup event. Conversely with our product, what we aim to do is always have a battery that can exceed the inverter's capabilities. That way you, that way you get the full power of that inverter that you paid for. And again, this is hugely important in backup when you're relying on, on all of that power in the inverter. So drilling down a little bit more into, into this combination, the SMA Sunnybury Storage and BYD HVL, um, it's important to note a couple of things. Um, so while we have this range of sizes, 12 to 32 kilowatt hours, um, we, we note that the 12 kilowatt hour variant is not compatible with the SMA Sunnyboy Storage. Why is that? It relates to voltage and power. And we want to make sure that we're only presenting you combinations where you can achieve that full power of the inverter. Taking that one off limits, you need to start with the 16 kilowatt hour variant. Additionally, something that Mike's going to get into as well, but I want to cover uh, just because it's an important one, is while we talked about the flexibility of the battery, there's actually a ton of flexibility at the inverter side, specifically which batteries you can put on this inverter. The same way storage has three inputs. 
And that affords you, since there are three separate input inputs, it affords you the ability to put three different batteries in parallel on that, uh, on that inverter. And specifically, they don't need to be the same size or the same brand or the same battery. They can be different sizes, they can be different generations of battery, and they can be different manufacturers of battery. So you, hear, you see this graphic, I have one of our new HVL20s on there, I have one of our older HV10.24 batteries, and I have a competitor battery, right? You, it's, you have the capability to do that. And I see this as being a huge advantage because in the short term with our battery box HVL, you could add modules, and in the long term, you could add whole different new generations of product to make sure that you uh, you have kind of a full suite of future proofing. So now I'm going to hand off to Mike to cover the Sunny Boy storage side of this uh, energy solution. Okay, thank you, Devin. Let's see if I can share my screen. Hopefully that is visible to everyone. Yep, loud and clear. Awesome. So for the second bit, I want to dive a little bit into the Sunny Boy storage, but what we at SMA refer to as the energy system home for backup. Uh, Devin has mentioned the Sunny Boy storage battery inverter. Most of the customers that inquire about our storage solution want their battery inverter to be able to create a microgrid if the utility grid fails. So not only grid interactive, perhaps time of use arbitrage, they want the device to work should the grid fail and provide power to their home. The Sunny Boy Storage is capable of doing that, but to safely be able to create a microgrid, uh, this device under the number three is also required, this automatic backup unit. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but before we get there, I want to emphasize a couple points that Devin uh, highlighted. Uh, the Sunny Boy Storage is SMA's battery inverter for high voltage lithium ion batteries. So this is a battery inverter only. Uh, this is not a hybrid inverter. We mentioned the five and the six kilowatt power class. That is the amount of AC power that will come out of the battery inverter. So that is the AC output power. And it can attach to one, two, or three of these batteries from the approved battery list. And we're showing the two BYD choices here. Devin showed the flexibility of utilizing all three inputs. We want to make sure everyone's aware that not all three inputs have to be populated upon installation. You can start with one, add at a future time to the open uh, inputs. And as Devin mentioned, for the HVL batteries, um, you could add capacity to an existing stack that uses only one of the DC inputs of the Sunny Boy storage. So there's a lot of flexibility for uh, at the time of install, as well as potential growth or adjustment of the system as the customer gets um, more understanding of their uses of it, <laughs> maybe on grid or, or even off grid with the ABU. So we'll talk a little bit about what's inside the ABU, why it's required, and then flexibility uh, with the battery choices. So the existing battery box HV and the new battery box HVL are kind of shown side by side here. And uh, I, BYD's improvement of this product line is very impressive, and I'd, I'd love to highlight a couple things. If you look at the footprint of the HV unit, you'll notice that the width and depth of the HVL is actually slightly smaller. Uh, so it's even a smaller footprint, uh, so less real estate that's needed for this battery. Uh, and then you can go up and really scale up in capacity. And three of the largest capacity HVL units attached to a single Sunny Boy storage would give you 96 kilowatt hours of storage capacity with this system. And certainly for a single inverter, I don't believe any of our competitors can touch that capacity. So that, that combination is, is really, really impressive. Looking briefly into the ABU and why it would be required for the Sunny Boy storage to work off grid. Um, the Sunny Boy storage is a battery inverter but just like our PV inverters, when the inverter is working, it is providing output balanced current on both line one and line two conductors. While you have the grid to absorb or compensate for any disparity between the loading of line one and line two when the grid is present, if the grid should fail, the Sunny Boy storage needs to be able to somehow potentially shift current um, to any imbalance on the load side from line one and line two. So while the inverter is a balanced current source, there is an auto former in the ABU, which provides most of its size and weight, <laughs> but it is required. So that auto former is there to do load balancing uh, when working in backup or microgrid mode. 
Uh, there are also some AC breakers provided for ease of installation, tying in the Sunny Boy storage's output, as well as potential PV uh, system to the microgrid. So those breakers are provided for ease of wiring. Um, there are two other components that are probably not well known, but absolutely critical for the operation of the system. There is an energy meter installed with CTs uh, placed at a very opportune location that provide power flow information to the Sunny Boy storage when it is operating in grid interactive mode. So the Sunny Boy storage needs to know uh, that power flow to understand how it should be charging and discharging the battery when the grid is present. So that is included in the ABU as well, uh, along with the CTs pre-wired to the energy meter. And then a backup control board that is actually the um, microgrid instigator. When the grid fails, the ABU will be responsible for isolating all of the components that will be providing power and receiving power in backup mode. So there's a 200 amp contactor that will isolate everything downstream from a faulted grid. And then this backup controller will send the signal to the Sunny Boy storage telling it, hey, you were a grid interactive inverter. We have safely isolated from a faulted grid. It is now capable, it is you know, safe for you to become a grid former. Uh, so this device, this ABU accessory is required, but it is it contains everything that is needed for safe grid backup operation from the Sunny Boy storage and the BYD battery. So for backup operation, uh, this is a required accessory. Not very exciting looking, kind of heavy, but <laughs> everything that is needed for safe microgrid operation with the Sunny Boy storage is included in this. And so the vast majority, I'd say 97 plus percent of our customer inquiries about the Sunny Boy storage want the device to be able to work in backup mode. So the ABU would be required uh, in addition to the Sunny Boy storage and one up to three batteries. We mentioned a breaker for PV input on the ABU. Uh, certainly the Sunny Boy storage can incorporate PV power when it's working in backup mode. Um, it is not required that that PV system be powered by an SMA inverter. There are some benefits to that that we'll show on the next slide, uh, but it is not required. There is, however, a size requirement of the PV system that will be available uh, when in backup mode, and that's 9.6 kilowatts. Um, that size limit is to ensure that the Sunny Boy storage, if it needs to throttle power down when it's in backup mode, uh, will be able to safely do that. Uh, if it was a gigantic PV system, there might be a chance that the response time was slow and too much charge current would be available. So there is a size limit uh, for PV capacity on the microgrid, uh, even if it is not an SMA PV inverter. One of the benefits of having an SMA PV inverter is that when the system goes into backup mode, the Sunny Boy storage is capable of sending a direct power control signal to SMA PV inverters um, to allow for very, very accurate and precise um, requests for power from the PV system. Uh, as a fallback in what the Sunny Boy storage can use for non-SMA PV systems is something called frequency shift power control. Uh, it can raise its microgrid frequency to throttle down or turn off uh, PV inverters that cannot listen to that uh, specific control signal. But having the SMA PV inverter that can listen to that control signal allows for precise requests of exact power levels. So one of the benefits of pairing an SMA PV inverter with the Sunny Boy storage, uh, particularly when backup uh, operation is desired. When the grid is present, even with the ABU, it's important for folks to understand that the Sunny Boy storage will be reading data from the energy meter in the ABU. And whenever out of the box, the grid interactive operation of the Sunny Boy storage is to whenever there is PV power pushing back to the grid to take that excess if possible and charge up the batteries. So that mode of operation is called increased self-consumption. It is certainly uh, very direct to program the Sunny Boy storage to change that default grid type behavior to uh, avoiding drawing from the grid during a time of use, um, a high charge rate, um, but that would be programmed into the Sunny Boy storage during commissioning. That's certainly possible. So several different types of grid interactive operation as well as microgrid operation unlocked by the presence of the automatic backup unit in the system. Devin mentioned that it was 
critical that system designers and eventual system owners understand the limitations of, in terms of storage for the batteries they choose, and in the inverter, the power level that is uh, capable of being um, delivered to loads. With the ABU in backup mode, the Sunny Boy storage five and six kilowatt units can exceed that AC rating for short periods of time. And this also ties into a battery choice. If you're using the six kilowatt Sunny Boy storage with a single a BYD HVL unit, uh, generally we'd recommend having that battery be at least the 20 kilowatt hour unit to again, safely cover these surge ratings. So again, takes a little bit of understanding of the whole system dynamic by an installer and a potential system owner. Uh, so going to a slightly larger capacity battery, if there is just one battery in the system uh, is often recommended. And it's very, very nice that the BYD units offer that flexibility of just adding um, the storage bricks into a single battery unit. One thing Devin mentioned a little bit about uh, code requirements, evolving code requirements. One of the very important ones that is coming to the forefront for energy storage systems is the UL 9540 listing. Um, paperwork for that listing, the pairing of either the five or six kilowatt Sunny Boy storage with all variants of the HV and now the HVL units. Um, that paperwork is available on the sma-america.com website on the downloads tab of the product page for the Sunny Boy storage. Uh, so if you are an installer, you are dealing with inspectors or plan checkers, and they're asking to check this box of the UL 9540 listing, we have the paperwork that uh, should be able to uh, cover those questions or requests. If you have any issues finding that, feel free to reach out to, uh, to Devin or myself, really anybody at the SMA team, and we'd be happy to uh, point you in the right direction. I have a couple line diagrams that I wanna show um, uh, hopefully it's not too confusing, but I want to uh, kind of emphasize some of the things that are included in the automatic backup unit. So this gray box at the center of the wiring diagram, um, kind of showing how components would be connected to it and where it may be placed in relation to the homeowner's uh, main service panel. Um, the ABU contains the 200 amp contactor, so quite it, it is capable of isolating. Um, a, a common size of main service panel for uh, homeowners. It's important to understand though that just having a 200 amp contactor in the ABU does not mean that 200 amps of backup power would be available when the, the grid has failed. We're providing breakers for the Sunny Boy storage, uh, AC output, as well as a direct connection for a PV system. Uh, that breaker for the PV system does not have to be utilized, certainly a breaker in the service panel behind the ABU would be appropriate as well. Again, there is that system size limit of 9.6 kilowatts that we mentioned before, and we're providing this breaker um, for, for ease of wiring. Um, and when that 200 amp contactor has isolated from any faulted grid, you would have, if the sun is up and shining, you have your power from the PV system and potentially from your batteries to service the loads but it's important for the installers to kind of understand what that load profile would be. If the Sunny Boy storage is providing battery power during the day to the loads, then the PV system is not recharging those batteries for overnight usage. So it's good to understand uh, the full capacity of the battery system as well as the PV system, balance those loads and um, don't let the homeowner see the, uh, the shiny object of the 200 amp rated contactor in the ABU and think they automatically get 200 amps of, uh, of power in backup mode. I don't want to scare folks with this diagram, but I do want to show wiring for kind of grid coming in, kind of flow through the 200 amp contactor. You can see the uh, darker gray uh, rectangles here. That is intended to show the CTs for the line conductors then going to the uh, backed up loads panel through the ABU. So that CT information is coming to the energy meter and the energy meter and the control boards will have communication cabling to the Sunny Boy storage. So if you're used to our Sunny Boy PV inverter, you have your DC conductors coming in, you have your AC conductors going out, maybe one communications cable. There's a little more going on with the Sunny Boy storage for wiring. There's gonna be some communication cabling coming from the ABU and from the DC source, which is now a high voltage battery, 
not only will there be DC conductors, there will also be a communications cable from the um, battery control unit on top. So the, the BMS is talking to the inverter and really as opposed to the Sunny Boy PV system where the inverter's in charge, in a Sunny Boy storage system, the battery box HV or HVL uh, is going to actually be in charge. There may be some times that Sunny Boy storage wants to provide a certain amount of power or you know, continue to provide that power for a long time. And eventually the um, battery management system uh, up here in, in the BCU is going to provide information to the Sunny Boy storage of, no, I'm not gonna provide you that peak power or we're getting down to a state of charge where you need to uh, turn off. So it's really the battery that's in charge. So that communication cabling is, is critical. So every BYD stack, you have only one set of DC wires and communication wires from each stack. So the HV line went up to 10 kilowatt hours per stack. So to get 20 kilowatt hours, you had to have two stacks. You had to have kind of duplicate wiring DC as well as this communication cable. And there are some length limits there. Uh, and this is imposed really by SMA. We wanna make sure that that signal um, is correctly received uh, and transmitted, uh, that there are no issues with that communication link because it's absolutely critical for the correct operation of the system. And so being able to move, and I'm gonna skip and come back to this, being able to move from a single stack that only goes up to 10 kilowatt hours, we see here one customer has installed three of those uh, HV stacks. It is now possible for them if they were to redesign the system to have that 30 kilowatt hour capacity in a single HVL stack, which has great implications on the amount of wiring <laughs> that has to be done and maintained. So having that flexibility with a smaller footprint uh, and being able to use a little bit more vertical space, but uh, vastly increase the capacity of a system or vastly reduce the amount of wiring that has to go into the installation of a system is a really, really great advancement from the HV to the HVL line. Uh, and eagle-eyed folks, if you see these top two install pictures, we have the Sunny Boy storage with the lighter lid right next to the Sunny Boy PV inverter with the darker gray lid. And this will give you an idea of the size of the ABU unit as well. So on uh, these top two installs, you have the ABU, you have PV that ties right into that. So you have that nice paired uh, SMA system, the Sunny Boy storage battery inverter, the Sunny Boy PV inverter and the ABU to allow that microgrid operation uh, safely anytime the utility grid should fail. The wiring picture, Devin showed a little cleaner picture from a newer uh, system. And um, we're showing some of the knockouts of the wiring will come out of this top part of the battery, the BCU unit. Uh, and we always have a question from folks, is it okay to run DC conductors and communication cabling in the same conduit? And as long as the communication cabling has insulation rating to the maximum voltage that would be present in that conduit run, it is acceptable. And the 20 kilowatt hour BYD unit, if you look at the spec sheet, that DC voltage never goes over 300 volts. So that is generally a pretty common insulation resistance for standard communication cabling. So that can make uh, the checklist of things you have to verify during installation uh, even simpler to satisfy. So having that communication from the BCU uh, internet connection or LAN connection for the battery for potential uh, firmware updates is useful to have. And so it just makes that installation flow uh, easier. So a lot of improvements uh, just across the board from the HV to the HVL paired with the Sunny Boy storage. So I think it's a, a really, uh, really good advancement and uh, expands the capabilities of the Sunny Boy storage uh, system uh, quite a bit. So the last couple of things I'd like to talk about is the monitoring option. So we have our classic Sunny Portal. It is very possible if you have the battery system, you'll see information about the battery system. If you have the Sunny Boy there, you'll get some PV information all on one screen, some detailed graphs available for power flows to and from the grid and potentially on site. You have an energy meter now, so you can calculate what the whole home is consuming. And our updated Sunny Portal view, viewing data from the Sunny Boy storage on the new NXOS Sunny Portal would require having our Data Manager M or the light version, the lower cost residential variant of that, that data logger on site. But there are some additional nice features that that newer monitoring portal has. So both 
our classic portal and our NXOS Sunny portal are options for monitoring um, these systems when they're installed. And there's quite a bit of data available for them. And both of those views on the Sunny portal are generally for whoever is, inch, is responsible for maintaining the system, but also perhaps the very tech savvy homeowner. Um, a lot of homeowners though want a simpler view of their system. And once the system is registered on either of the Sunny portals, providing the free SMA Energy app to the homeowner where they can link to that Sunny portal plant uh, and see in this view shown here on the mobile phone icon, a very simple view, but comprehensive. It shows if there is PV in a Sunny Boy storage system installed on the site, they'll have the information for the PV production, the power flow either into or out of the battery system through the Sunny Boy storage. And because of the energy meter being there in the system, have the ability to calculate what the home consumption is and then net power flow to or from the grid. So in a very simple graphical uh, interface, very easy for a system owner to see this. So the Energy App is fairly new for us in North America, but I think a very valuable tool for homeowners, particularly when you have multiple inverters on a site like, like we're showing here with Sunny Boy Storage as well as the PV system. So definitely something to be aware of if you're working with uh, SMA inverters at all, battery and or PV. Uh, and with that, I think I have reached the end of my presentation bit. So I would love to. Uh, so I got um, some questions in my chat directly here. Um, one question was, if I if I have an HV system, mm -hmm. an, an older HV system, can I add the HVL to it? Um, can these be in the same stack or can they be used with the same inverter? What, how does that work? Exactly. So. In the same stack, no, you would have an HV stack. If you wanted to add an HVL unit to the same Sunny Boy storage, yes, that would require a whole HVL dedicated stack. And as long as you don't have three HVs already, you would still have an open input on that Sunny Boy storage. So it would be possible. And Devin, you can correct anything that I said incorrectly there. <laughs> no, you nailed it. Just on the battery side, the, the modules aren't interchangeable for, for, for two reasons. One is just physically, they don't interact. They're different sizes, as, as Mike covered. Um, but also there's uh, different size, different amounts of cell and different voltage in there. So it fundamentally wouldn't work, even if it could be forced on there. So uh, yeah, they're, sure. distinct, they're distinct product lines with the same design philosophy. That definitely makes sense. So folks would have to make sure that they're, they're in distinct strings. Um, okay, and let's see here. Another another one. Um, I see in the UL ninety five forty system documentation for SMA that I can use the twelve k WH size with the three point eight SPS. It looks like the person's looking at the documentation and they're seeing that there actually is a listing for that that size combination. Um, so they just wanted to verify that that they caught that correctly. And yeah, so. Did yeah. Or Mike, you want to take the one or? Let me sure. Go. Yeah. So the the 3.8 and, and Devin mentioned this really, I think, very nicely in the graphic kind of showed capacity for battery as well as capacity on the inverter. Um, the product family for the Sunny Boy storage goes from 3.8 up to 6K. Um, so while the 3.8 unit might work well with the 12 kilowatt hour battery, the same can't be said for the 6 kilowatt Sunny Boy storage. You might be asking for more power than can be pulled from a single 12 kWh battery. So we would like to say that just take the 12 kWh unit off the table so there's no confusion. While the 3.8 might work with that, we want to make sure somebody then doesn't say, well, the customer wants the six and I'm going to use it with the 12. Uh, and then at some point when they're asking for a large draw from the inverter, the BCU of the battery is going to say, no, sorry, can't, can't do that. Um, <laughs> and so while it shows up on the paperwork and would be technically correct with the 3.8, um, certainly I think at SMA, we're getting requests more for the six kilowatt unit. Um, and, and so to reduce confusion, we're kind of just saying, take the 12 kWh HVL off the table. Yeah, that makes sense. Keep it simple. And uh, so I, I think you you did touch on this. Uh, I believe it was in your, your slides, Mike, uh, mentioned that the combo does have uh, UL 9540 kind of system rating. And so, yeah, we can, we can share that listing data for any, uh, for anybody that needs it. Yeah. And just to, and just to kind of 
plug one more little bit on that. Um, you know, it's a system rating, so it's across both products. So that's why there's some confusion uh, often where if you look at one of the data sheets, you might not see that UL listing listed on that individual product's data sheet because it's not a listing for that individual product. So it's a system level certificate. And so what we can provide is that system level UL cert to provide your AHJ uh, for that install. I think, I think we're good as far as the questions go. I want to thank you both for joining us today and giving us this update. We're really excited about the HBL product. It's great because it, it brings a whole new scale to the potential for the Sunny Boy storage, right? So customers are absolutely going to be able to um, build out larger energy storage, um, like home energy storage solutions. And that's just a very exciting possibility. Um, I want to invite everyone also to go ahead and check out our web store. All of these items are available there with more information. Um, and if you talk to our sales team, you'll be able to get an account for the web store that will allow you to sign in and see pricing and availability as well. Thank awesome. you, Aaron. That, that was great. Indeed. Thanks for having us. Thank you both.